How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Friday, Electronic Campfire number nine, I think it is, I hope. What'd you think of that intro? I needed to get a couple of, I guess, tools. I've graduated from using toys <laughs> to now using actual camera gear for today's show. So I needed to get these and I thought, hey, I wonder if I could actually walk away from the desk with this camera, have the mic, pick up the sound of the drawers opening up so I would have the audio follow this video and then when I come back here, the video would switch back to this mic. Don't know if I did it or not. Let me know in the comments if it worked out. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna uh, turn this thing off, put it away. It's a Sony, so it can go away. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How are you all doing? It is great to see you. We've got a wonderful show for you today. I have a wonderful show for you. First thing I'm gonna do, a little housekeeping here. I wanna see who is with us, who is together with us. Oh boy, we got uh, the Mr. Jarble. Thank you, Mr. Jarble. The, our greatest supporter, biggest fan, Mr. Jarble here. Kenneth, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This is so awesome. Paul, I just talked to you on Discord. Great to see you here. Awesome. Steven, we got so many people from Massachusetts, Germany, Alaska. Oh, oh, love Alaska. One of the greatest places in the world to take photographs is Alaska. Okay. So let's get started. I actually have a, you know, an agenda, <laughs> okay? I'm gonna try and keep the, the show about 30 minutes. I may go over. The max it'll be is about 45 minutes, but let's get started. I wanna talk about, first off, what is this gift from Fujifilm? Because I didn't know what it was. This weird icon popped up on my camera. I had no idea what it was. And once I figured it out, it was, a little strange, and I wanna share the whole thing with you so you will never forget, because I actually have gotten some questions on this. So, if you take a normal Fujifilm camera, okay, and what we'll do is we will take a picture of something right now to have as, you know, sort of a demo. So, okay, here goes. I'm gonna take a picture right here. Boom, okay. All right, so I just took a picture with an X-T4, now I'm gonna hit the playback button on it. All right, let's see if we can show it on the monitor. Can we make it work? Can we make it work? No, okay, no big deal. We're gonna go to plan B. Plan B is going to be disconnect camera from HDMI, go to overhead and do it on the overhead. Okay, always have a plan B, especially when you're doing a live show. All right, so I don't know if you can see it, um, but there it is. Okay, so nothing fancy, just a photo that I took, right, with the X-T4 on an SD card on the X-T4, and I'm playing it back in the monitor. Okay, exhibit B, I have an X-T3 camera, okay? And what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna get too fancy now. I'm not gonna hook this thing into the HDMI. I'm gonna actually just, go with it right here because I don't want any more technical problems. But I'm gonna take another photo. This time I'm gonna take a photo with the X-T3 camera, okay? So uh, let me do this. Okay, let me do this right here. Where's my focus point? Hold on, I don't know if you guys can see this, okay. All right, you can't see it, but I'm gonna take it anyway. Boom, all right, so I just took Another picture with this camera. Let's verify it. That's the picture I just took, okay? All right, good, good, good. Now, here's what happens if I'll take the SD card out of the X-T4, okay? And I'll take the XT card, the, the, S, the SD card out of the X-T, XT, XT, I can't speak today. I will take the SD card out of the X-T3 and put the SD card in the X-T4. Do you understand that? I'm taking the SD card out of one Fuji cam and I'm putting it in another. That's all I'm doing. Put it in there, boom. Let's see what it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the overhead. Uh, let's see if I can go here, okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit playback. Okay, have a look at this. You see that? Do you see the little gift icon? Look, 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 whoa. Okay, <laughs> you see that right there? You see that? 
Does anybody know what it is? Okay. Well, put your answer in the comments. I'm going to tell you. That little gift icon, it's a weird icon, and what it means is that any photo that you play back on your camera that was not taken with your camera gets a little gift icon. It's like a gift photo. It's a gift for your camera of a photo taken from another camera. Does that make sense, right? So that's what that is. But it goes a step further, and I'm gonna see if I can make this work. Um, let me grab the other SD card. Now, what I'm gonna do is see what happens if we drag and drop a regular JPEG image from a laptop computer onto this and stick it in the camera. What does the Fuji Cam do? Don't know. And that's where we use our little tools. Now, I have, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I have this, it's really funny because this is the single worst piece of S laptop I have ever used in, since they started making laptops. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I've been around since they had the Osborne, which was a laptop the size of the football that the president would carry around, okay? This is the biggest piece of S they've ever made. Horrible keyboard, horrible everything, not enough ports. It's the MacBook 2020, I believe. Don't get it, okay? Then they came out in the following year with the 2021. This is the best laptop I've ever, in fact, not only the best laptop, the best computer I've ever used in my life. I've never seen a company put out such a dog S product and then a year later, put out such a great product. My point in all this, I can't just plug <laughs> right, an SD card. Why? Have a look at this. Nothing, nothing, no ports. There's nothing, it's just, oh, so it's, it's, it's a design element, it's sleek, it's Apple, right. Meanwhile, I can't do anything with it, it's useless, it's a paperweight. So if I wanna play back this SD card on this computer, I have to plug it in my SD card reader, okay, which is fine. I just plug it right into here. Okay, I'm plugging the SanDisk into the Lexar, but who cares? Okay, there you go. But <laughs> I can't plug this in here because this thing doesn't even bother with any USB ports. It's only USB-C. So now I've got to grab this Dell thing, <laughs> okay? It just gets so convoluted. Welcome to Apple. And then this stupid thing goes in here. Now I've got this whole goofy thing, all right? But I've got it. Now I should be able to plug it in, okay? Now what I need to do before I plug it in is I have to pull out, and I really didn't want to do this on the live stream, okay? I, I just did not. By the way, to answer your question, the, the photos that I just took were both JPEG and RAW, okay? It doesn't matter, but they're both JPEG and RAW. So here's what I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to plug in this computer. I hope I don't pull this whole, if I go dark or if I disappear, I'll just use my phone and come back up and say goodbye. Let's see if this works. I'm pulling out, I'm still here. Okay, I pulled out the right cord. All right, I'm now plugging the cam, the uh, computer screen in. Okay, hold on. All right, I got the computer screen plugged in. Do we have a computer here? Yes, yes, excellent, okay. We may get through this live stream yet. Now, I'm gonna take the SD card. <laughs> this is the longest demo on the, in the planet. I'm gonna take this thing and I'm gonna plug it into this horrible laptop here. Just like this, you can't really see it, but I'm plugging it in. Okay, hold on a second. <sighs> I wish I could show you this mess of wires I'm having to pull out and pull around. Okay, now, if I can get this to display, we're gonna be in good shape. All right, I've got it plugged in. Let me see if it comes up. Yes, whew, two for two. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on the crummy laptop, which I have the SD card plugged into. I'm gonna open up the SD card. I'm gonna drag and drop a JPEG, just any JPEG, okay? And we're gonna see what happens. So here we go, here, here, hi. Okay, so I am now opening up the SD card. DC, there it is right there. Okay, Fuji, I guess this is it. No, that's not, it's probably this one. Okay, that was the photo I just took. I'm going to drag this JPEG. Now this JPEG, isn't that just an awesome shot? That This JPEG I took years ago 
from a, I think it was even a, it was either a BlackBerry or it was one of the original iPhones. It's it's of downtown Los Angeles. So I wanted to get a very non Fuji film JPEG. So I'm going to drag that onto the computer now. So here goes. Um, going to drag it. Whoops. Drag it onto the SD card. Okay, there it is. I am now going to take out this and I'm going to put it into the camera, okay? Just like this, whoops, got one in there already. All right, put it in here. Okay, it seemed like a lot of work just to demo something. No, oh, anyway, okay, so here it goes. Let's see what we get. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the playback Okay, you know this picture. I just took this in here. Oh, look, and you see the little present? Do you see that? Okay, I don't know if you can see it. Let me go closer. There it is. Okay, so no present, present. No present, gift, right? Does everybody understand that? I never want to have to talk about this icon again, <laughs> okay? But that's what that means. And if you ever see that on your camera, if you're ever on Facebook or whatever, and somebody asks, hey, what does this icon mean? It just appeared all of a sudden. Now you know, because you were here today. This is part of your history. It's part of your legacy to know this information, right? <laughs> okay? Okay, we're done with that. Now, let's... Go to the audience. Ah, thank you, Laura. That is too kind of you. Hello from Planet Claire. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Got people from England. Mr. Jarble likes the Apple rant. Mr. Jarble, I did that Apple rant for you. If you ever want to get me started on a rant, okay, on a real rant, there are two topics that will get me going. One of them we're actually going to talk about today. The first topic is Apple. I will go, but, but Apple sometimes has really good stuff. It just depends. They've made some really stupid decisions, and then they've made some genius decisions. It just depends. So, so they're a mixed bag, okay? The other topic, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, is Instagram, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so we'll get to that in just a minute. All right, let me see where we are. All right, let's talk now about the upcoming, I wanna do a little news kind of thing. So let's talk about the upcoming Fuji event that is coming on September 8th. And I have been going, like a good Fuji film shooter, to Fuji Rumors, that is the best place for news, all things Fuji. And we have a couple of interesting news items for you on that. The first, is a possibility of releasing the GF20 to 35mm f4 lens for the GFX system. Most likely they're going to announce that. So that's going to be kind of cool to have that out there. I think a lot of people are going to really want to get this lens. So very, very excited. Those of you who have the GF system, um, I'm sure you'll be keeping your eye on this one. If there's anybody in the chat who has a GFX system, let me know. Um, but that's that's a really cool thing. The second thing is obviously the big elephant in the room, and that is the X-H2, okay? According to Fuji rumors, it's going to have improved low-high ISO performance. That would be really nice. 40 megapixels, okay? So 40 megapixel camera, having that uh, would be wonderful. What do you think they're going to announce? Those are the two things I think are pretty foregone conclusions. And Fuji Rumors has also said, and I, I do agree with them, that there will not be an X-T5 announcement at this September 8th event. However, it's a pretty foregone conclusion that if you look at the specs of what this X-H2 is gonna have, remember I'm talking about the upcoming X-H2, I'm not talking about the previous X-H2S, but the upcoming 40 megapixel X-H2, a lot of the specs from that may carry over into what you see when an X-T5 eventually comes out. So that's probably the biggest thing I'm, I'm excited about, is seeing that camera and wondering, wow, that amount of power, or at least a good part of it perhaps, moved into the ergonomics of something like an X-T5. <sighs> you know, I can dream, but it may be a reality. So, okay, uh, bum, 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 50 millimeter Mark II, yes, yes. 
Oh, hey there, John. Nice to see you. St. Petersburg. John, I was in St. Petersburg the day that it, or the week that it switched to from Leningrad to St. Petersburg. I actually took a train in from Helsinki, Finland to Leningrad. And then I, so my ticket was Helsinki to Leningrad. And then seven days later, my ticket was St. Petersburg to Helsinki. It switched, it switched places. Every time I go to a city, it does that. I was in Hong Kong the night that it switched over to being run by the Chinese, right? So it completely switched back to China. Um, I don't know, I get lucky. So, okay, hello to Amsterdam. Hello in Amsterdam. Um, I, according to this, no, I don't have any information or answers on any firmware for the X-T3. Some of you by now should know my feelings on that. I do believe Fuji does very quickly, as in yesterday, they need to get back to the level of firmware updates, giving features. Even if they're not doing autofocus or some kind of mechanical thing, they need to be improving menus and adding little features here and there, drop in a film sim, do something. But I, I am a firm believer in that. Kaizen, Kaizen, Kaizen. I made a whole video about that. You know, you can search my channel for that. Um, and Patrick, I don't know when an X-Pro4 will come out, but I don't think this year. Okay. All right. So, um, and you know what? And I agree with Mr. Jarble here that this year before the end of the year, X-T5 would be a bit too soon with these other two cameras. But certainly next year, for sure. Um, I Yeah, I agree. But I, I still want one. And listen, Mr. Jarble, if they released one, I don't think anybody's going to complain, <laughs> but they're not going to, okay? Okay, so here's what we need to talk about now. Um, I, I've been having a lot of trouble with the whole Instagram thing, okay? And I have a history with Instagram, long, long time ago. I had one of the first accounts with histogram, Instagram. It was histam, Instamatic, what was that app that came out Right at the same time Instagram did, it was hipstamatic. That's what it was. I had both. And at the time, I think that hipstamatic was actually doing better than Instagram, and then Instagram blew it away because they had the social aspect of it. They had the community. The other app, the other photo sharing app at the time, all it did, it had the really cool vintage filters, but it had no way to connect with other people who took photos. So Instagram figured out real quick, hey, let's have it be about sharing and about community. And so they did. And back in those early days, and we're talking, I think it was 2009, 10, something like that. Um, I know I had an account for sure in 2011. And I remember needing tech support at the time and getting emails from Kevin Sistrom. From, and that was the guy that founded it. And here he was late at night writing emails, helping people. It was a small run organization. And flash forward to today, you know, it was bought out by Facebook. And, you know, I, here's the thing. I mean, Facebook has the right to do whatever they want to it. It's their, they, they paid for it. They paid a lot of money, as in a billion dollars, one billion dollars. They paid, they paid a fortune for it. So everybody who worked at Instagram got paid really well. So they, they need to not say a word and go quietly off into that yacht into the Caribbean, okay? However, the users of Instagram, you know, the photographers have a very strong right to say what they want about it. And Instagram is at a point now where I, I don't enjoy using it at all. I have about 8,000 followers, or I hate that term. I have 8,000 people who um, occasionally perhaps see my account. That in the, in the scheme of Instagram, that's a drop in the bucket. That's nothing. And there are some really good Instagram creators out there. There are some photographers who are, at, who are just killing it with Instagram. They're doing great. Um, I am not one of them. And for me, Instagram has never been about promotion. It's been about sharing and connecting. And that's how it started. And so that's just built into the DNA that I have with it. And it's gone so far since then. So um, what's interesting is Peter McKinnon, another YouTuber, made a video recently about this. And the, he recommended an alternate platform, which I was already on this, 
but I didn't. I've never really talked about it until now. And so, for example, um, you see posts like this all over the place. You know, this is an average post of what an average photographer uh, throughout Instagram feels. You know, make Instagram Instagram again. I mean, people are putting these up. It, it's a. It's not that Instagram doesn't know there's a problem. They know there's a problem. Okay, so. So then I decided to check out Vero, V-E-R-O, and the, it's V-E-R-O dot C-O, okay, if you look at the address there, V-E-R-O -V dot C-O, okay, and I, I kind of like it, I kind of like it, it reminds me, I mean, there's a few problems with it. It encourages sharing everything, and I don't care about somebody sharing memes or video games. And it's too much. They need to remove some of that stuff. But the the I the premise behind it of sharing photos is it's it's a nice app. I actually really like it. Here's what it looks like on a website. Um, let me show you. Okay, so there, look, there's Sean Tucker. He's got an account. See that? Okay, he's got an account. So you know, it it definitely is worth checking out. I'm not leaving Instagram, right? At least not right now. And the reason is, why would I? I've got 8,000 people that kind of enjoy or at least have indicated they've enjoyed content that I put up. So I'm gonna continue to post. One of the things I'm probably gonna start doing if Vero t is really awesome and I'm enjoying it more and more because I'm not enjoying Instagram. Less, I mean, less and less I enjoy it. For me, it's almost like a job. I go there, I promote my video, and I get the hell out of Dodge because it's all vertical video. I don't like vertical video. I'll tell you why in a minute, but I don't like vertical video at all. Never have, never will. So, it, and not only that, it's, it, I'm seeing stuff from a lot of people that I'm not interested in seeing stuff from. And I don't know if their algorithm is broken, but even if it worked perfectly, I don't want an algorithm. I have a reason I follow certain people. I want to see their stuff. And so Vero is more like you will see who you follow and they will see you. Anyhow, I don't want to get too down the rabbit hole with Instagram. What do you think about it? Are you enjoying it? Do you like it as much as you used to? Um, because if it's not enjoyable, what the hell's the point of using it? Unless you're getting some serious promotion from it, you're getting income from it, or you work for Instagram, those would be the only three reasons why you should spend any time at all on it whatsoever. And I don't work for them, I'm not enjoying it, and yeah, okay, there's a smidgen of promotion, people do hear about the channel, but it's not, I don't know, I, I looked at my YouTube stats and very few of my video views are coming from Instagram. So it, the writing is on the wall for me on that one. Um, okay, so um, let me show you why I'm not a huge fan of vertical video. And I think I may be the only one on the planet that feels this way, but um, I, I just, I've got to mention it, okay? Um, Those of you backstage members, I think I went through this already. <laughs> but for those of you here in the live stream, I'll do it again. Okay, so this is why I'm not a huge fan of the 9x16 format, okay? And really when it comes right down to it, why? I mean, because these phones, when you flip them this way and you look at them, they look great. I mean, I could watch entire movies on this horizontal screen on an iPhone 13 Pro. It looks great. You know, so I'm trying to think to myself, all right, I'm holding it with one hand vertically. The only time I would really need to do that and to be able to see the video is if I'm standing at a urinal, okay? That's the only time. Any other time, I don't mind turning it and having the nice wide screen. It looks beautiful. So. I don't buy the argument that vertical video is necessary for phones. No, it's not. Every phone on the planet, you can turn it. Okay, that's my, that's my first point, all right? My second point about this, and then I'm gonna get off the topic, I promise, but I gotta show you this. This is why I'm not a fan of vertical video, and it has to do with these right here. Let me show you, okay? So, okay, here we go, we're doing this. Okay, everybody see that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> horizontal, horizontal, right? Okay. You have two eyes, and the way they're positioned on your head 
You're, you've got this peripheral view. My wife actually mentioned this at dinner, and, and I just, I was stunned by it. It just connected with me so much, which is one of the reasons I'm sharing it now. So you have two eyes, and you have this peripheral vision, and so you see things out of your corner of your eyes. You're just accustomed to more horizontal viewport, right? I promise you this, if I looked, let me show you what I think a happy vertical video viewing experience would look like. Okay, there. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so I'll make you a deal. The minute, the minute I start looking like this will be the day that I am so excited to put out lots of vertical video for this channel. Honestly, I, I just don't enjoy it. And I will see, you know, if it's, if it's 15 seconds of something that's quickly caught on camera in a shopping mall, fine. Th I don't have a problem with that. But when I'm starting to see two, three, four, five, ten minute videos that are in that aspect ratio, I, I don't understand the appeal. So, and I don't believe it's an age thing. I believe it's a perception thing. But what do you think? I would love to know what you think. Am I am I nuts? Is this is this the rantings of a crazy person, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm nuts. But that's I'm just not a fan. And so for for me I don't do vertical video, which is another reason I'm not really enjoying Instagram a whole lot. I, I don't like watching them and I don't like creating them a whole lot. I tried, but it just it's not my thing. Um which is too bad because there is money to be made in vertical video. I mean, there is right now, if you're editing and producing vertical ads for social media, whew, you're going to do well. That's where the current, current trends are, you know. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we got lots of people in here talking about Instagram and vertical video. That's awesome. Wow. Roland, never used Facebook. Good for you. I wish I could say I've never used Facebook. Facebook is something that I wish I could have erased from my psyche and never have used it. I just, it, it, it just did nothing for me, uh, but waste time. Um, okay. So, but I want to be really clear. There are some very talented filmmakers out there that are crushing it with vertical video. And I see what they do. And it's funny because a lot of their tips and techniques are the same ones used in advertising. They talk about, oh, okay, in the first five, no, the first two seconds of the video and for Instagram, you've got to have a hook. You've got to suck them in. You've got to, they do all of the same thing. And I'm realizing more and more that the most successful TikTok or Instagram vertical video formats are, from people who would do well in advertising. They're basically ads in terms of grabbing your attention quickly, serving you up something, and then repeating it and trying to keep you on it. That's, that's what it is. And they're doing a great job. There are some people that are just incredibly talented at it. Um, but I, I just, I, it's, not, it's not my thing. Okay. Uh, so, okay, so somebody doesn't like 360 videos. I don't like editing 360 videos, but I do like shooting them, and they've, though, the technology has come so far. I remember I went down on a social media visit to NASA, and we went into the VAB. That's the big building, right, where they built the Artemis rocket right now that was just wheeled out of that building and onto the launch pad that is going to launch to the moon. That huge rocket was built inside this huge building called the VAB, which stands for Vehicle Assembly Building. And they took us inside this thing. It's so big, it's like it has its own cloud and weather formations at the time. I mean, it's huge, okay? And there was a guy there on our tour that had this contraption set up. It was a stick with a circular wheel around it. And he had something along the lines of 40, 40 GoPro cameras all the way around it. And he had to start each one. We had to wait for him. He had to start up each GoPro camera around the whole thing, right? And he's, he plants it like a flag in the middle of the VAB, okay? And he's, he's rolling this thing and he's getting coverage from 360 degrees. And now you can get that from, you know, an Instax three, what is it, an Insta 360, you know, one of those tiny little cameras now. It's incredible how far 360 has come. And what 
360 is not good for primary coverage. What 360 is great for is not A roll, not B roll, but what I call C roll. C for coverage. What you do is you take your 360 cam, you put it on a stick, you stick it in the ground near to where you, let's say you're doing a behind the scenes stuff on a location shooter, a model shooter, whatever. You stick it on the ground, you turn it on, and you forget about it. And the camera is capturing every single little thing all around you, and it's awesome. So, you know, and, and you can go back later and you can maneuver it around. You might have missed something. There, you know, there might be some cool thing you could catch. So that's what it's great for. But it's a pain to edit, and I'm not a fan of editing 360 video. It's always choking up. The, even on this laptop, it's a pain. So they, they, they got to fix that. Um, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, Chuck. That's great you live close to NASA. That would be something else. I'd be there all the time. Um, okay. Let's see here. Okay, uh, where is anything about white balance? Okay, so we got a question here. It's not off topic at all. This is a photography, what are you nuts? It's a photography channel, okay. KM says about white balance. How can I use it and get, whoops, sorry, hold on. I was yakking too much. How can I use it and capture low light in the moment? Okay, okay, low light and white balance. White balance, if you're in a hurry, Fuji Films white belt. Let's see if I can get this thing working. Fuji Films white balance settings are pretty darn good. And first thing I would tell you is shoot raw because it really doesn't matter what your white balance settings are in the camera. They don't affect the raw file at all. So what you can do is you can go ahead and shoot in raw and then worry about it in Capture One or Lightroom later on, you know, and that and that'll be great. That's what I do. Um, what I often do is I grab one of these things, okay, and I take a picture of it, right? I take a picture of this, and I will sample off the gray or the white, depending, um, and I'll sample off the gray or the white, and now I've got my white balance, and I use that as my reference for all the photos, and I just copy them across all photos in Lightroom or Capture One. So that's one, one tip I would give you is shoot in RAW. If you can't shoot in RAW, or you don't want to shoot in RAW, or you don't have the, the SD card space for RAW, and you have to use white balance in camera, then what you can do is, you know, you can go into, um, your white balance, and I have it in a My Menu, you see that? I got it right here, front row and center. And what I like to do is keep it in auto. I mean, auto works great, just keep it in auto. Um, another thing, and th I'm glad white balance came up, this is a gotcha. I have had a number of emails from people who say, I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm looking through my screen and I'm seeing a green tint and I think I'm going crazy or a yellow tint or a purple tint or an orange tint, right? Do you know what's causing that? It's, it, it drives people nuts. Let me show you and how to fix it. So what happens is they go into their white balance, they go into auto and somehow they're not paying attention and they see like this happens, right? And then they kind of get out of it. They're like, wait a minute, what the hell? And they go, um, wait, uh, I'm in auto white balance. What's going on here? And they don't go to that extra area, okay, and bring it back to the center, <laughs> okay, <laughs> right? So that's my that's my tip of the day for you with white balance. But if you're shooting JPEG and you want to nail white balance, whether it's low light or not, okay, just stick it on auto. It, it's better that you get the shot. And even if the white balance is off on a JPEG, you can still fix it in post. What you can't fix is a shot that you didn't get because you're fiddling around trying to set the white balance. And if you have time, the best thing you could do is set a custom white balance. And I have videos on that. I'm not gonna go through it, but just search my videos. I've got how to set custom white balance. It's really easy to do on these cameras, okay? Okay, um, very good point, King Sam. Everybody read this now, okay? Really good point. Really, 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 really good point. Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, okay, so my, <laughs> okay, so the model rocket's right there. It, it, it's up on the, you know, it's right, it's right, it's right there. Can you see the bottom of it? It's right there. Okay, it's right behind the more important exposure triangle, <laughs> right? So, yeah. Um, 
I, I, I had to move it because I needed the space for, now I'm going to sound like a, like, you know, a, a, an idiot, but I had, I needed the space for the, the subscriber plaque. You know, I wanted to have, you know, that, that plaque cause you know, it means a lot to me. So I wanted to have it in the background. So the rocket had to be moved up there. It's still here though. And I'm never getting rid of it. I built that with my son. So that permanent part of the studio. Um, okay. So we're going to have to wrap this up soon, but I want to answer some more questions. Uh, did I miss any super chats? I really hope I didn't. Let me check. Hold on one second. Uh, yeah, I am missing stuff. Mr. Jarble. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Seriously. And I, I am, if you keep doing this, I, I, I noticed you have a YouTube channel. I'm gonna promote your YouTube channel, okay? I'm gonna send everybody there because you keep you keep you're you're single-handedly lifting this this up with your donations. Thank you so much. Honestly, that means a lot to me. And I was telling my wife the other night, you know, this is Mr. Jarble, I, I you know, I, I feel bad because I don't know how to, to repay you. It's like you're 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 just these awesome donations. Thank you so much. And I did check out your channel, by the way, and you got some pretty good game walkthroughs. I I was able I was able to see so. All right. Um, thank you again. Do we have uh, anything? Florian, am I reading this right? Wait. No. No, 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 no. How do I? Okay. Man, Florian, thank you. I... What are you doing? Florian, Florian is on the Gear Iguana Hall of Fame. Okay, you couldn't be supporting the channel more. And you're donating this? Come on, man. Thank you, but you you don't you don't need to. I, I mean, I'm I'm touched. I really am. I I don't even know what to say. I'm like sweating right now because this this means a lot to me. And this is the stuff I edit out or I don't see. You won't see in my videos because I'm not interacting with people. I'm in this dark room all by myself, talking to the camera and s fixing things and dropping things. But um, man, I. I I would like to connect with you at some point. So, um, you know, whenever you're anywhere near Georgia, let me know. And uh, I will take you out to lunch. My treat. My treat. Um, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Wow. <laughs> New York City. Okay. Well, uh, hmm. That may happen sooner than, uh, than you think. Um, I'll talk to you on, in on, uh, on Instagram. Right. I'll talk to you on Discord. Uh, okay, so all right, stop with the super chats, please. It's stressing me out. Um, Rushi, thank you, thank you. You are you are more than welcome, sir. I'm glad it's helped you. And BlueTac318, thank you. I know who you are. Thank you so much. Um, okay, where are we here? Uh, ISO adaptive adjustment. I don't know. I, that's a, that's a much bigger topic than I can answer right now, but hit me up in an email or shoot me uh, an Instagram direct message and I will try and follow up and make a video on that because it is a topic that I want to cover. It was a question for those of you that don't know about ISO adaptive adjustments. And, and I think that's a good thing. Um, Okay, my X-T3 keeps switching shooting mode on its own like a malfunction. Yeah, that's a malfunction. Okay, do we have an X-T3 in the house? Yeah, we do. All right, so when you say it keeps switching shooting modes, what do you mean? Do you mean like shooting, like with a dial, it goes from bracketing to high speed to S to what exactly? Uh, or do you mean focus mode dial? Um, that's very unusual. Now. If you're talking about video, there's that goofy thing with the touchscreen causing movie silent mode to screw it up. And I have a video on movie silent mode and what a pain that can be for some people if you don't know what to expect with that. Search that on my channel, but I, I'm not sure. I would need more info on your question. Um, yes, I have a Discord server. It is for the Paldetec, it's for the Paldetec backstage members or the YouTube channel members. Um, it's an invitation only thing and if you join backstage or you join the channel as a member you get a, a special link that takes you right to discord and it is something that I'm just starting to build up it's not a very big community right now but it's an awesome one so yeah it's it's definitely growing um, <laughs> uh, okay so uh, no I'm definitely not going to photo I, I unfortunately but it's not off the table about this other little event before 
photo Kina, which on the 8th. So that may be a possibility. Florian, are you listening? That may be a possibility. Um, okay. Do I use the bracketing on a regular basis? I never use the bracketing ever on the Fujifilm camera. I, I'm almost never. What, I don't know why. It Maybe it's just the style of shooting that I have. The bracketing function works great. It's awesome, and you certainly should use it, but I've never needed it because most of the shots that I take, I have put so much pre-work into setting up the lighting exactly as I need it that by the time I go and press the shutter button, I've kind of, I'm already somewhere else, right? I've done all the work with the exposure already, so I don't need to bracket for those type of shots. But if I take this camera out, say to, I don't know, New York City, and I see something and I absolutely have to get it and I, there's a huge amount of dynamic range in the shot, yeah, I'll throw it into bracketing and do it for that. But in the normal co course of what I do, no, I, I don't use it. Um, red, I have never tried that type of camera. Doesn't mean I wouldn't, but I just, I've never tried it, so. But would I? Absolutely, if someone wants to send me one. The, the camera fund right now is so backed up still with Fuji gear, right? I can't, I can't even think of getting, I mean, it was, it was, it was hard enough with this, <laughs> but I kind of need this for, it, it's a, I use this for things for quick grab behind the scenes stuff, because if I've got my Fuji cam in a scene, I need something to film that, and I just don't like the ergonomics of using a phone. So I have a Sony, but that's about it in terms of other brands. I mean, I have a Canon back there, I, I but it's a, it's a t it's an 80 it's an 80d Cameron Canon 80d I I don't use it a whole lot really it's Fuji now almost exclusively Fuji um, I'm sorry I'm just I'm kind of distracted I mean those those super chats guys really I mean they you you, you don't need to do that and and thank you though uh, it's really yeah I'm sweating right now I'm I mean it's I'm not used to this, you know. I'm an introvert, by the way, <laughs> okay? I'm an introvert, honestly, I swear. You know, I am, I am. Ask my wife, I am, I'm an introvert. Okay, uh, where are we here? I'd love to see a, f oh, I love this idea. Okay, I love this idea. Yes, yes, and yes, we're gonna do this. Maybe even on the next campfire. I love this idea. Okay, so I will let you all know about that. That's a great idea, for sure. Um, when will I test the 150 to 60 millimeter? <laughs> Whenever I get one. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I should ask them about that. That's a, I, I don't have it and I would love to test that lens. I still have a couple of third party lenses I'm working on testing right now. Um, the Tamron, one of them, and the other, um, I can't remember the brand name. It's a smaller brand, but I'm testing those. Okay. All right, folks. So, I think, no, I don't know any secondhand equipment stores. Honestly, I mean, Gear, gear Focus. Try, check out Gear Focus. Uh, that would be one, uh, Chuck, for sure. The GF, uh, I like the GFX 100, uh, 100S. When I use, I, I reviewed it on my channel, and still to this day, that is the greatest camera I've ever used. It's, it's incredible. It, it is it's just an incredible machine. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know what, Rushdie, you're right. Uh, that's probably true. I think photographers are interesting because I think a lot of them can be introverted, but you can't be completely introverted if you're, say, you know, shooting weddings or dealing with clients. I mean, you've got to kind of get out in the world and do that, but you are behind a camera. There is this disconnect. There is this you're on the edge. You're always on the edge, the outside. You're, and you're very aware. Photographers, more than any other profession, are very aware of time and how it passes by from one moment to the, because you're recording time. You are creating the closest thing to a time machine that anybody will have. So if you do say, you know, you do a, a photo shoot of somebody's you know, five-year-old child photos for them, you've created a time machine. You've, you've frozen that moment in time. And as someone who has had a raging fire come through <laughs> Lake Arrowhead, the mountain that I used to live on, not once, but twice, had 
the police knock on my door not once but twice and tell me I've got about 15 minutes to get out because the fire is raging up the street, I can tell you, when your house is on fire, one of the first things that anyone is going to take are the photos. I know. Um, yeah, so it didn't burn down. We, we were lucky. Twice. <laughs> Hey, okay, uh, ooh, question of the day. Let's start an argument. What do I think is better, the X-T3 or the X-S10? I think the X, well, it depends. It depends what you're using it for, but overall, if I could choose one or the other, X-T3 because of the dials and the ergonomics, number one, and number two, number two, this little thing right here. The X-S10 doesn't have this and I couldn't imagine living without it. And when I heard that the XH2S did not have one, but instead has a button there, the jury is still out on that. I haven't held that camera yet, so the jury's still out. So maybe a button there could be cool. I could go boom, boom, and switch into manual, right? Or boom, 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 and go back into continuous. I don't know how it works, but this little switch, I love it. But maybe a button could be faster, but having nothing there, mm, not not for me. So. Listen, I love everything else about the XS10, but that was for me, for me, a deal breaker. Okay, um, yes, yes we do. We take photos to stop time. Now, I have to say this and then I'm gonna get off because I'm already three minutes over. Um, if you are a new dad or a new mom, new parent out there and you're wondering about, you know, shooting your children as they're born and as they grow up and all of that. Absolutely do it and use good Fuji gear to do it. But, and this is a big one, make absolutely sure that you always have, at, for every event or everything that you're shooting, make sure that you are shooting video, okay? I'm not trying to knock on photography, but what I'm saying is that you know, I now have quite a large amount of photos of my kids. And what I'm noticing, because they're, you know, they're 14 and thir they're 14 and 12 years old. And what I'm noticing is that when I'm going back and looking through those old folders of photos from when they're five, when they're six and so forth, I'm going right to the video first. And I'm looking at the photos too, but it's the video because there's something about hearing the audio audio and, and hearing what they sound like and hearing, when you talk about freezing time, audio is even more significant. And if you don't believe me, go to YouTube when I'm done with this, this video today, this video, this live stream, go to YouTube and search up, you know, New York City in the 1900s or, you know, San Francisco in 1902. And what people have done is they found this, these old black and white, these really old, film footages of, of the city at that time, and they put sound effects and sound behind it. And once you hear the sound, it's unbelievable. You feel like you've time traveled back there. It is unreal. And so shoot video, shoot video, shoot video. And take your photos too, of course, but it'll be the video that I think over time will be, it, it'll, it'll get you right there. That's something you wanna have for sure, okay? Okay, that's it. Um, we are we are just. I just want to say, anybody else I miss? No, 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 no. Okay, well, we got another another. Uh, oh, thank you so much, Chuck. Thank you, thank you, pal. Thank you. Okay, please tell me I didn't miss anybody else. Um, if I missed any comments or questions and I didn't get to them. I will read through them like I always do. I get a transcript of the live stream from the software. It sends me a little text file. I will go, I'll read through them and I will reach out to you if, if there's a question you ask that I didn't get to, if I can find your, uh, your um, YouTube channel from that and then from there I can pull your email from that or if I recognize your name I can go into, into my channel and see if you're publicly subscribed and pull it up from there. So, okay. All right, everyone. Uh, oh, here we go. What do I use for editing video? I use currently Final Cut Pro. I love it in terms of that. There are things about it that drive me crazy, just like there are things about Apple products that drive me crazy. But the one reason I do use Final Cut Pro is the magnetic timeline, okay? Once you use that magnetic timeline, 
the fact that it just it, you don't have to deal with gaps. It goes, it closes all the gaps, so I can open up clips and just cut, 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 and it's fast. And it just gets the hell out of my way and lets me edit. So that's the reason I use it, and I love it. I love it for that. Um, and the Final Cut group is an odd, there's a group of YouTubers that do Final Cut Pro tutorials, and they are just the nicest group of people in the world. So it's got a great community of support with it as well. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much. Hey, I, I want a little credit here. This is the third live stream I've done in a row, okay? I did it, number three, I did it. And we, we got a little technical today. We got a little complicated. We went, you know, we, we went remote, <laughs> right? We went remote with this thing. We, we actually did that. And so I think it went well. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, as always, of course, uh, if you did enjoy it, give it the like the like where is this thing i can't see it the like and subscribe okay and listen um all of you thank you thank you so much to those of you that did the super chats your awesome questions and for being here and joining me around today's electronic campfire you know it's again uh i'm starting to really love this live stream i don't want to say more than the regular channel videos but I'm just really loving it and it's because of you it's because I get to hang out with you so we'll do this again next Friday in the meantime have an awesome weekend and I'll see you next week take care everyone thanks for showing up so long <laughs>